Okay, in this tutorial I'm going to do some uh, actual animation. Now there's a lot of tutorials about modeling out there on the internet, and so I'm not going to cover modeling. There's a lot of tutorials about texturing, I'm not going to cover texturing, but you know, I, I really I couldn't find a whole lot of tutorials about actually animating. How do I make a scene? Okay, I can model a character, I can rig a character, but how do I actually put a character into a scene? How, how do I get him to do something? Okay, I've been you know, I, I've been making a movie, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm learning along the way. It's certainly not Pixar quality, but it's, you know, it's respectable, and it tells a story. And so I'm going to go through making a scene here today, and I'm going to start off with let's animate an action. So here is what is happening. We've, we're going to have a character, and this character has just been knocked off balance, and so now it's turning around. And so this is my storyboard. I'm sorry. This is my storyboard that I've got going on here. So the first action, I'm going to have kind of a close-up shot of his face, and I'm going to have the camera going around his face in a counter, in a clockwise direction, while he's turning his head in the other direction. And then I'm going to have, and this character is going to be kind of a robot, actually a cyborg. Uh, it's going to zoom. It's going to have like a view that'll look like he's look like through his eyes, you know, and so it'll have a reddish tint and like a you know, if you've seen like Terminator or Terminator 2, how he's got that uh, that chevron that moves through the screen to kind of tell you what he's looking at. We'll have one of those things, and that'll be focusing on something. I, I, I wanted to blank out that, but okay, so he's going to target something. And then it's going to cut to his arm, which is going to go, he's going to cock his arm, which is made up, it's got part of his arm is made up of like a big Gatling gun. And so he's going to cock his arm and raise it up just as the Gatling gun starts to spin. So we're going to focus in on that Gatling gun with it spinning and it's going to and it's going to be in slow motion. Start spinning slow motion. Cox gun. Okay. And then we're going to see the bullet actually fire out of one of the barrels while it's spinning slow motion and we're going to take our camera and to track the bullet and now the rest of this stuff I don't want to reveal what happened so I blanked it out so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have it hit like a tree or something or a box I don't know the bullet we're going to follow the bullet and watch it strike a box okay and I don't know I don't want to reveal what happens in the story maybe you can figure out you'll have to watch my videos if you want to see what happens all the way so that's what our goal is okay so how do I start that well how on earth would I do a scene like that that's the question uh, let's uh, let's turn this background image off. How do I do that? Um, let's just turn its opacity down to zero. Okay. First off, I need to import my character. Now, eventually, I will upload this character uh, to BlendSwap, but it won't be until I finish this next scene because. I'll be honest with you. I use Blend Swap as sort of advertising. Uh, I give you guys a character that I spent many, many hours on, and if I'm lucky, I'd love it if you guys would watch what I did with him. Um, so where did I put him? Now this is of course my file system, so you obviously wouldn't need it. But let's see. For me, it's an Art Blender models. This guy would be called Bad Boy, um, and now. Bad Boy is made up of a whole bunch of objects. I'll show you. See, this is all Bad Boy. You've got his armature, which I think is somewhere over here, and then you've got a whole bunch of pieces to him. And you'll see why. So instead of appending all of these together at once, I grouped them all. And so now I can just append the group. And now if I go to that, there's our, there's our character. And now you can already see it's slowing down my system. I don't know if you can see, but I can see. So I'm going to turn Simplify on. And if I turn that subdivision down to zero, and in fact, even if, I mean, these things aren't as important anymore either. But now that reduces a lot of the complexity that comes with this, this character. Okay. Now this character's name is actually Pan, who was the, uh, and notice who was the Greek god of, of the hunt. So that's a little something into my story. And so I am going to 
turn on armature deformations and now his these are like jet packs and now typically he has them back unless he's flying okay all right that looks okay um and now I could even hide these and so in fact what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move all of these bones to a different layer so I'm pressing the M key and I'm gonna move them to bone layer I don't know whatever that layer would be 20 10 I don't care alright and now if I notice here notice how he doesn't have a chest bone that's because I think accidentally that bone is on layer 2 so I wanna move that back to layer 1 these are the layer 1 I keep for the main bones and, and you know I'm not gonna do much with these bones so I'm going to move those bones to a different layer I'm gonna move those to I don't know whatever layer so just so that I get them out of the way and I don't have to look at them and now eventually I might animate them but I don't know let's see what happens and you can also tell I got the axes on so let's change that that would be over here somewhere display 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 you know it's over here display axes I don't need the axes but I do like x-ray all right I should be ready to go. Now I'm a big fan of pose to pose animation. Now what is pose to pose animation? It's where you take a scene or an action and you break it down into its key poses. If you were to draw a comic book, what would be the pose that best describes how you are, what this character is doing at that instant in time? and then you go to the next pose that is key that if you were to draw a comic what would be in the next panel alright so that's that's sort of I, I drew a lot of comics when I was younger my my goal was to be my, my life's goal was to be a comic book artist and so I think a lot in comic book terms and that's actually you know it's been a good thing in a lot of ways alright so my first panel was his face is turning while the camera is going around it. All right, so we've got to add a little bit to that because his face isn't the only thing that's going to be turning. So this is kind of nice though because it 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 starts off with a simple pose. Let's put him into a stand. So he's just been knocked back, and so now he's got to kind of get back. And I need to get let's let's put him on the ground being the red line and let's get rid of the, uh, the background image also okay I'm not gonna need to do a whole lot with his body other than just knowing that he's turning so if he were turning let's see in which direction is he gonna be turning if I were to look from the top I'm going to want his head turning counterclockwise, so that would mean that it would have to start off kind of over here to give him some room to turn in that direction. Now I'm not even going to start with his hands because they probably won't be in this particular uh, shot. I mean, you won't be able to see his arms or anything, so I'm not going to worry about them. All right, so he's been kind of knocked back or something, and you can notice how things off off camera are kind of awkward. Well, that's not necessarily bad because they'll be off camera. All right, let's set up our camera. So I just hit the zero key. Uh, and now if I can select my camera, which I'm having a difficult time doing, so I'm going to go up here and select it. And it must be on layer one, and so I'm going to take that camera and I'm going to move it to layer two, which is apparently my working layer right now isn't necessarily the best way to go but that's the way we are all right and now according to my storyboard this this camera is going to be whipping around this direction while he's turning in this direction so I'm gonna insert a keyframe right there at keyframe zero and now notice how I get all these choices I can Typically, whenever you insert keyframes, you always want to insert location and rotations. And so I can turn my keying set to location rotation down here. And now every time I press the I key, it's just automatically going to insert location rotation keyframes. So let's look at that. Now, I don't know exactly how long I want this shot to last. 
So I'm going to say maybe two seconds, which would be 50 frames, which is probably pretty long. So I'm going to move fast forward 50 frames. And you can always retime later with pose to pose animation, which is one of the really nice things about it. All right, so I just retimed it, or so I just moved forward 50 frames along my timeline, which you look at down here. So I'm going to grab that camera, and it's going to be somewhere over here now. And now that I'm thinking about it, I kind of didn't think this thing through. I may want to reverse the action. So you can see how you get this effect. I may want to do just exactly the opposite. And I'll tell you why. Because when this is all said and done, I'm going to be looking at the right side of his face. But according to my according to my uh, 